and welcome to another episode of Black Money Matters. I'm Karen Weaver, and I'm here with my co-host, Jamika Patrick. Hello. Hey, Jamika. Hi. And we have a special guest with us today. Yes, His name is do. Antoine Little, and he's an employee education consultant. Mm -hmm. And he's going to tell us what that means. Mm -hmm. But actually, Jamika, before we get started, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> oh. I have a surprise for you because you remember two weeks ago mm -hmm. we had Bill Picard. We you did, I do. And we had a great conversation. We did. With him, and he talked about his book, mm -hmm. Millionaire Moves. Mm -hmm. And we said we wanted it. We did. So I have one for you. I started yes. reading it yesterday. <laughs> thank you. It, it, thank you. It's a great read. Oh and my it's got goodness. Some wonderful thank you. information. I said I'm gonna get one for me and one for Jimmy oh, so we can start you. reading this. I appreciate and, that. Um, and it, it's just as good as the conversation yeah. we had with him. Yeah. So I mean, and it was really good talking to him, you know, billionaire from Flint, right. talking about all of those things that, you know, all about black money mm -hmm. and building black wealth. So I am excited. I cannot wait to start <laughs> reading this. This is going to be what I'm doing tonight. And, you know, well, that was what I started doing <laughs> last night. So oh, thank you so, so much. We'll have to talk about that. Yes. And, um, okay. What you were talking about how successful he was, and, mm -hmm. and so today, I mean, I, I think it's really good that we're having this conversation with you, because I don't know if we should start by really saying, what does an employee education consultant do? Uh, and, and, and tell us why it's so, it's really important. It's really important that we're having this conversation today. Thank you, glad to be here. But before we get started, I just want to Look at that book. Oh. Because, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I have a group of friends, and we have what we call Wealthy Wednesdays, where we have a conference call, and we talk oh, I'm about... Oh, I'm going to write that down, <laughs> Wealthy right, Wednesday. Yeah, I like that. We talk about our investments, what are some moves that we're making as we accumulate that wealth and share those ideas mm -hmm. amongst each other. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, which will lead me into... <laughs> <laughs> right where we want to go, right? Absolutely. Right. Okay, An well, let's go. Employee education consultant. So what I actually do, I talk to employees that work for employers. Uh, so if you're an employee and you have access to an em employer-sponsored plan known as a 401k plan or mm -hmm. a 403b plan, mm -hmm. I actually talk to those employees about the importance of saving for retirement. Mm -hmm. But not only that, how much should you be saving for retirement? And what are the ways that you can invest that money as well? Okay. Because a lot of times we hear save for retirement, save mm -hmm. as much as you can, save as long as you can. But so many times we really don't know what that actually means. Right. Well, right. what does it mean? Because, I mean, when should you start saving? The earlier you start, the better off you'll be. And a lot of times people say, and here's one of the things that I run into a lot, is that people say, well, I waited so long, it's probably too late for me to start saving. Right. But it's, it's never too late. It's never too late to start saving. Even when you hear people say, if you read Money Magazine or you're listening to C.V. Orman or people like that, and they're saying, well, you should be saving 10 to 20 percent. And the mindset a lot of us will have is that, well, I cannot afford to save 10 right, to 20 percent. Right, right, right. So I'll wait until next year. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's not the way you want to do it. Okay. You want to start saving as much as you can for as long as you can. So let's say for whatever reason, you can only start saving 1 percent, start there. And then gradually increase those savings. The small incremental changes, it will not be that noticeable out of your take-home pay. And a lot of times, employer plans, they come with a match. Mm -hmm. So guess what? If you're not saving, what are you missing out on? The match. The match, mm -hmm. the match absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that match like can be... like a double coupon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> or free money. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And maybe you're thinking, well, is it free money? And I have a concept for that, too. What is it? When you go to work each and every day, do you think you work pretty hard? Yes. Is it a benefit that you work so hard for each and every day? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're leaving money on the table that is rightfully yours. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're not saving. If you're so, not saving. So look at where we are right now. We're we're in this pandemic, and the, there was a, a check that was coming, an unemployment check mm -hmm. that was 
a nice six hundred dollars right. a week on top of what you would typically qualify for. And so that's gone. Um, if we had been saving, yes, what would have happened? I mean, what would have been the difference? Because we weren't prepared for this. We weren't prepared for the all of a sudden nobody's working. Mm -hmm. You know, this this money is leaving. And what do we do? What could we have done? Well. The government did pass what we call the CARES Act, mm -hmm. which depending on your situation, it will give you access to your money. And even with participating in the 401k plan, you still have access to your money, whether it's if your plan allows a loan, which ordinarily we would say, do not take out a loan because it does slow the growth of your mm -hmm. retirement plan because it is there for a retirement. Mm -hmm. Or what would be known as a hardship withdrawal or maybe some other type of withdrawal depending on the features of your employer's plan. But with the CARES Act, it does give you relief if you or somebody that, that you're caring for uh, is impacted by the coronavirus. Okay. So you have access to your money should you need it. Well, you know what? Oh, go ahead. So I, just for clarification, so people who have, so let's say I have $60,000 in my 401k right now. Mm -hmm. I can withdraw some of that money under the CARES Act without penalty? Is that what you're saying? It's not without penalty. Okay. Well, let me back up a little bit. Okay. It would still be subject to ordinary income taxes when okay. you file your taxes. But because of it, because it's COVID related, you would not be subject to a penalty tax for early distribution. Okay. Which means if you're under age 59 and a half and you take the money out of your plan, Ordinarily, you would be subject to mm -hmm. a ten percent early penalty tax, mm -hmm. but with this COVID relief, known as the CARES Act, mm -hmm. that ten percent penalty tax would not apply. Okay. And the beauty of this is that it does give you up to three years to pay that withdrawal back as well. Okay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so you're talking about investing. It's funny because we got an email from somebody that mm -hmm. said they wanted to hear more about investing mm -hmm. because a lot of times. As, as blacks, we don't do that, mm -hmm. you know, and you're talking about saving, whether it's 1%, 5%, 10 or 20%. Absolutely. We don't invest in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how little uh, we turn over money in our own community, mm -hmm. you know, zero to 1%. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and usually that, that one time that it turns over is buying something. Mm -hmm. And we could at least say twice because we should be investing in ourselves. So Absolutely. how do we get to that kind of mindset? I mean, what's going on that we don't do that? I think mostly because we're consumers. Mm -hmm. and That's what you said. Mm -hmm. you, <laughs> what did you say last week? That we are the biggest consumers in the world. So we should be able to create wealth within our own community because we're buying it. So let's just buy from each other. And let me tell you about this incident. Uh, I was providing a meeting, I forget the exact company. Mm -hmm. um, it was for a bottling company in the Baltimore, Maryland region. Okay. And it was a young gentleman, black guy. He um, sat through one of the meetings and we had a live Q&A afterwards. And his mindset, he said, so you're saying to me, rather than spending my money on rims, <laughs> I should be saving money in my 401k plan. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because we're not going to be young forever. And that's the thing we don't understand. We may be 21 now, mm -hmm. but imagine your 47-year-old mm -hmm. self, right. your 57-year-old self. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be that person that's getting close to 65 after you've worked 35 years and then start thinking, well, now I need to start preparing for retirement. Mm -hmm. You need to do it as early as possible. Well, it makes me think of what we talked about before when we were saying, you know, uh, you want to buy tennis shoes or you mm -hmm. want to go to these different places. That's fine, but why don't you buy some stock in some of these companies mm -hmm. Absolutely. that you're spending your money with? Absolutely. Buy and then you're buying from yourself. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And, it, and, it, and I mean, buy what you can yeah. and keep doing that keep growing that but I, i've talked to some people they say well i don't even know how to look at those kinds of things mm -hmm. they don't know how to look at that and and so how do we educate ourselves in those areas okay well there's a couple of ways with uh employer sponsor plans one mm -hmm. of the things that's becoming more popular is what we call as the default fund for your employer's plan 
okay. lot of employers are adopting what we call target date funds based on the year you reach 65 or closely matching the year you'll probably retire. So let's say the three of us, we're, I'll say we're all 45. Okay. Which means that we would be retiring somewhere around the year 2035. Mm -hmm. So we would select that target date fund with that year in its name. And the way that fund is designed, the further we are away from 2035, that fund is going to be more aggressive by investing more heavily in stocks and less in bonds. Mm -hmm. But as we get closer to the year 2035, the fund will automatically reduce that risk for us, where it's going to become more conservative. So it's taken all the guesswork out of it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we may find it easier to go that route because we're not sure exactly what to pick from. Mm -hmm. Because you may look at your employer's fund lineup and see 30 different funds and you're thinking, well, I don't know anything about That's investing. That's what you were saying. That's what we were saying. What yeah. should I do? You know, they sit you down, you started your new job, you're excited. They sit you down, they talk about the benefits, and they're saying, okay, we'll pick from these these funds. And you're right. like, do you want to be aggressive? Do you want yeah. to be moderate? <laughs> do you want to be cautious? And you're like, I don't know. No one has I ever told right me. Now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have, you know, a, a good quality of life for the rest of my life as far as my finances. So I don't know what to pick and what to do. So, th I mean, this is a really good... This, this sounds really interesting because that's something that I haven't heard of before. And when I've selected, you know, different things from employers, it was kind of a, a shot in the dark. Let me get a few, uh -huh. a couple of moderates that I'm not going to lose any money. Maybe one aggressive, you know, and so. Right. And the biggest misconception is people will say, well, I'll go with the stable value fund or the money market fund mm -hmm. where you put in a dollar, you're going to get a dollar back and maybe a little bit of interest. But really think about what are interest rates these days? And you may feel like you're not taking on any risk, but mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. Are you going to Taking on the risk inflation? of not making enough money. Absolutely. So a well-diversified portfolio will be your best friend no matter what life stage you're in. Okay. Hmm. Okay. That's good. So I have a question about, um, so if so, now I have my portfolio. It's very diverse. I'm doing very well. Mm -hmm. I changed jobs. Right. What do you do? What do you, what do, you do then? Several options. Um, if your employer will permit, you can leave it in that former mm -hmm. employer's plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so Is that good to do? It, it, it can be. It depends on if you're the person that's paying attention to it. Mm, because okay. working in retirement services, I've encountered those people that uh, left their money with their former employer, but they're not paying attention or keeping up with those statements. And let's say that employer, they change record keepers, and if you're not paying attention, you end mm. up not knowing where that money is. Mm -hmm. um, but you do have the option if your new employer will allow you to roll it over into their plan, that is an option that's available to you as well. So that way you can consolidate your assets. And then you're paying attention, more attention to where it is. So is there an option if um, I want to take it from my old employer? Let's just say I don't think they're going to be around for a long time. And I want to take it from them for whatever reason. But my new employer doesn't allow the rollover. Is there a way to keep that going myself without the match? So there's, there are two things I heard with that mm -hmm. question. Um, so let's say the employer is not going to be around. Because I, I actually encounter those questions on my job. And here's one example. Uh, the, this pr particular employee, he mm -hmm. was mad with his employer. Mm -hmm. He didn't like the way they actually did things. So he said, well, I'm going to put all of my money in the stable value fund because I don't want my employer to make money. But what he was re wasn't realizing is that that's not his employer's money. Mm -hmm. Even if the employer went out of business, mm -hmm. those are assets that are not a part of the employer. Okay. They're actually held in trust with the uh, provider for the retirement plan. So, okay, one of the things you were talking about is if you're paying attention 
it's okay to leave it there. Absolutely. Okay, so I, but then they send you these reports or these statements. Yes. That's intimidating. Sometimes you mm -hmm. pull it out and you're looking and you see these numbers and mm -hmm. you see these words and you don't know what they mean. So would I contact someone like you? I mean, how would I get to understand? Would I, would I call an employee education consultant? I mean, how would I go about even, because I, I look at it and I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. okay. What do I do with this? I make money. Right. What's going on? <laughs> well, actually, each of those statements, they should have a phone number mm -hmm. on that statement mm -hmm. where you can call you the can call. participant services department. That would be who you would call. And a lot of times we're intimidated to call right? Um, because we're thinking, well, I don't know what to ask. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to look stupid when I do call. But keep in mind, participant service associates, that's what they're there for. They're, even if you, I always say, even if you have to call that 800 number and you ramble on, that the more you ramble, they're able to figure out what your question is and they're able to help guide you along the way. Okay. Oh, that was a good answer. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, to give just a level of comfort because, mm -hmm. because you can feel like you're rambling. But yes. you're saying that helps them figure out what it is you need yes. and how to explain things Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Hmm, okay. Okay. Well, that's great to know. That's really great to know. Right. What do you think has been the biggest misconception? Uh, the biggest misconception, I think people always think that they're going to lose their money. Mm -hmm. Or they yeah. look at, like, even if we look at the, the, the indexes, like the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and we hear that the stock market is down, and mm -hmm. even if we think about right. do that. Do I trade now? What do mm -hmm. I do right. if, I, if I do have something? Right. What do I do? And we think about that dip that we had in March, and most people are still in the yeah. mindset. Mm -hmm. And some people dip. are still in the mindset from 2008 that they still lost mm -hmm. their money. Right. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that the stock market has drawn maybe three times that since then. Uh, but just knowing what your time horizon is, and when I say time horizon, how much risk can you afford? Think about it like this. Am I, oh, how many years am I away from retirement? Is retirement next year, five years away, 10 years or more? Mm -hmm. Once I reach retirement, when will I need to start drawing that money? Will it be immediately upon retirement or maybe five years after retirement? Then also think how many years you expect retirement to last you? And that's the question. And how do, do I want to live when I retire? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're saying plan for a retirement of 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. I like 30. Yeah. <laughs> and, and keep in mind, it, it very well could be longer. Mm -hmm. Right. But as a right. guy, plan for 20 to 30 years. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. So we need to actually start thinking, what does retirement look like for me? How do I want to live in retirement? Because the part we're missing when we think about retirement, we're thinking, well, Social Security is going to be there. But do the numbers. You get your Social Security records. Mm -hmm. How much will that actually pay you? Mm -hmm. Right. It's not a lot. It's not I'm a lot. Not a lot. Very much at all. I'm not yeah, a lot. they send you those statements. I'm like, I couldn't live off I here. know it. Absolutely. Exactly. So what we need to think is that once you reach retirement, we need to be prepared to replace anywhere from 75 to 85 percent of our pre-retirement income. Okay. So we have to think, well, where is this money going to come from? Right. The normal so sources, Social Security. Mm -hmm. It may be pretty small. Okay. Mm -hmm. Personal savings, whether you save it on your own or if you inherit it. Okay. And my dad already told us he's going to spend all of his before he got. <laughs> so, so I can. So you have your money here. <laughs> I'm not mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have left is a pension if you're fortunate enough to have to even have a mm -hmm. pension. Right. Absolutely. But what most people do have access to is an employer sponsored plan where you decide how much you want to save, mm -hmm. what percentage you want deducted from your paycheck, it happens automatically. How do you want that money invested? It happens automatically. So what do you do? Because that, that is good if you, do have, if, if you work for a company that does that. But what if you're a small business or an entrepreneur? Then what do you do? How do you start saving and, you know, setting these kinds of goals? Without matching, without... Right. What, what would somebody. you suggest then? 
And that's where you can contact, you mentioned the broker or mm -hmm. the bank, because earlier your question was part of that was what if I decide I want to roll it over to my own mm -hmm. retirement plan, self-directed. You do have access to your own IRA, self-directed IRA. As a small business owner or self-employed person, you mm -hmm. would have access to open up a self-employed IRA as well. So that would be something you'd want to contact, maybe your local bank, mm -hmm. credit union, mm -hmm. or reach out to some of the big firms like, I uh, hate to say any names because... Well, say three of them. <laughs> okay, so uh, Just the to big give an three example. players are typically Fidelity, mm -hmm. Vanguard, Hero Price, mm -hmm. uh, any one of those. Any of those kind of yep. places. And they would help somebody if I'm starting a small business. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And I don't have that employer mm -hmm. to, to say, well, just take this out of my check because I'll, I'll, sometimes if you get it taken out of your check, you don't miss it. Right. Absolutely. And so that's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing your own you're business. You're writing the check. Right. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> so, you know, what's the conversation for that person? Yeah. It will be the same. Start that self-employed IRA. Find out what your options are. And also pay attention to cost. A lot of times we do not pay attention to cost. Okay, so what do you mean? Okay, when it comes to selecting your investments, mm -hmm. mutual funds, do, are they no-load mutual funds? Uh, do they have a front load? What are the expense ratios? Those are all things we need to pay more attention to mm -hmm. as well. So what, what's a no-load? A no-load means that if you put in X amount of dollars, let's say for sake of argument, $10,000, you actually have $10,000 invested. Where a front load fund, they're going to charge you up front. So let's say that $10,000 has a, a fee that they take out, out the top as soon as you invest your money, mm -hmm. then you actually do not have $10,000 invested because that financial mm -hmm. house, they took maybe 2% or 10% right off the top. Okay. So pay attention to the loads as well. Okay. I always say look at the fees. Okay. And you can easily do an online search. Let's say you log on to your 401k plan mm -hmm. or you just do a search for different mutual funds. There's always a button where you can click on fees and it'll highlight what the fees are. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just learning something new. Whether, <laughs> there's, like, wow. whether there's a redemption fee where if you sell that investment, you have to pay a fee for selling it. Uh, look at the expense ratios as well. Every mutual fund will have an expense ratio, and I say look at the cost because cost does matter. Mm -hmm. The lower the fees, the more money you have working for you. Okay, so low, you want low fees. Absolutely. Okay. Hmm. So I want to go back. Something that you said, you said pay attention to when you would need to access the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I retire, and I have enough in savings and whatever to not access my retirement fund for five years. Absolutely. Should I be worried that the money that I have sitting there does not that's now now there's no money going in because I'm not working anymore. There's no match. So it's sitting there. Should I be worried that something's gonna happen within the market and when I need to access that money is going to be gone or greatly reduced? And if so, if that is do I just take it all out and yeah, put it in do, do I take safe. it out and put it in my <laughs> bank or in the safe or yeah, I in the shoebox. I get that all the time. Uh, do I take the money out and, right, and just hold and it? Hold it. Well, where are you going to put it? In the shoebox. Okay. And where are you going to keep that shoebox? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hidden. Okay, so. I don't know. <laughs> is, is that a concern, though, that, that the market, that I could know I that I some, have? I mean, like what just happened? We're in a. In, coronavirus mm -hmm. pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I can leave my money and it's gone. That's why you should do an annual checkup as well. Okay. Making sure like you like going to the doctor. Absolutely. I say set a date with your money. A couple of my friends, hmm. one of my friends, he money. say mm -hmm. he has a date with his money every year just to make sure he's on track for that entire year. I have another friend. She has what she calls Money Mondays. Okay. She's looking at the money that she has, 
And then I'm on that call with her where we talk about Wealthy Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And then she also set up a, a third day for the week. She calls it Freedom Friday. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> tell me about Wealthy Wednesday again, and then I want to hear Freedom Friday. So Wealthy Wednesday, let's say the three of us were talking about the money moves that we made, what worked, what didn't work. And the thing about it is not everything you do is going to work especially when it comes to investing because sometimes we just panic that's mm -hmm. what we do as people mm -hmm. we have emotions and we panic so we make mistakes but the thing is what do you learn from those mistakes because with the mistakes that i've made in, with investing mm -hmm. i probably would not have invested another dime but the thing is you learn from those mistakes mm -hmm. just like everything else in life mm -hmm. so and the way she'll talk about it is you want to date your investments. Is this an investment that you want to marry or mm -hmm. something you're just dating? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you have to change things <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you dating. <laughs> right. It's not going out with you again. <laughs> you don't know how to ask. It's like that strategy didn't work for me. Let me regroup and rebalance and reset my plan. Okay. So, okay. Uh, okay, and what about Freedom Friday, what's that? You celebrate your wins. Okay. You mm -hmm. celebrate your wins. You rejoice in <coughs> what you did right. So that way you can keep that momentum going. So that way you're ready to start all over again. Because a lot of times we'll focus on the mistakes that we made. Especially when we think about the 2008 downturn. Okay. Mm -hmm. So many people sold their investment. They said, well, I'm losing my money. And the thing that we don't realize is that it's a paper loss. And what I mean by paper, you get those statements, and let's say your balance was $100,000, and now you're saying it's $50,000. And we panic, which is mm -hmm. normal. And then we're saying, well, I'm going to move all of my money into something more stable, and I'll get back in the market once everything recovers. But what we're not realizing is, we're locking in those losses because we still own we still own that it's like if you take this book as an example okay paid eleven dollars ninety five cents for it mm -hmm. had it two years now it's not worth eleven dollars mm -hmm. and ninety five cents right. but you still have that book this book is still yours mm -hmm. But let's say 10 years down the road, this book becomes a collector's item, and now it's worth $45. Mm -hmm. So by holding on to it, you have access to recover and you, that That's loss. a good point, because that is, you, you, you're like, I lost this money, mm -hmm. so should I get a new date? Um, but there, sometimes you have to hold on. To you have to hold on. Sometimes it has to be for better or for worse. Right. And the thing <laughs> is, you cannot let a short-term event impact your long-term strategy. Right. right. Because wow. what we do okay. know about the stock market is that it does two things. It goes up. It goes up and it, it goes, goes down. down. And what does it do again? It goes go back up. Go right back. Mm -hmm. That is really interesting. So, so, and I don't know if you can answer this or not, but you make me think about something else. So what do you think about investment clubs? Is that what you, aren't they, aren't they clubs? Like if, if the three of us said, oh, we're going we're gonna to start us an investment club. That actually can work. I, I have heard some success stories about investment clubs. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure that you're with the right group of people that have the same mindset. Okay. okay. Because they can work. They really can. And I actually started about starting, thought about starting the, an investment club. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes everybody's mindset is not exactly where yours is. And that's why for me and my friends, Wealthy Wednesday works better for us. Okay. Because I, I've, I've had some people talk about investment clubs. If somebody were going to, what are the things you said you have to have the same mindset? What should people be looking for to know that we're a good group to we're start this fit. club? Uh, people that are r willing to do the research. They're willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. Because I can't say, hey, I, I, what do you think about this stock? And I can't tell you anything about it. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can tell you is, <laughs> I, I think some. it's a good buy. Right. Mm -hmm. We should get it. 
but do the fundamentals. If you don't have somebody that's willing to do the fundamentals to tell you more about uh, this is a good stock we should consider, what does their balance sheet look like? Uh, what is their revenue? Mm -hmm. What are their projections? Mm -hmm. uh, where do we see this stock going in the future? So if you have a group of people that are willing to do all of that kind of work mm -hmm. and put their money with it too, then an investment club can work. Okay. okay. I wonder, you know, I've, I've just always wondered about that because I've heard people talk about it mm -hmm. and I said, hmm, I wonder how that would work. Mm -hmm. And it's also an easy way for people to learn together as well. Like that's to learn right. about investing and Absolutely. when to hold, when to fold, that type of thing. <laughs> that type mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And be prepared to defend your, your investment choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually attended this meeting as an observer. Uh, so some investment clubs look around and see if any local investment clubs are already in existence and allowing you to come sit in as, and observe one of their meetings um, where you can actually see the entire dynamics of how it works. Um, are they, are, is there a certain size that should be in an investment club? I mean, can they be too small or too long? What's a From what I researched, mm -hmm. we really don't want it more than 20 people. Okay. Yeah. And what's the smallest on the other end? If, if there were three people, is that too small? Should those three try to kind of recruit other people? Uh, I think anywhere a good number between five mm -hmm. and 20. Okay. Uh, because if you think about a successful investment club, you're, you're going to elect the officers. Who's going to be the, okay. the treasurer? Mm -hmm. and the so it's not just a group of people the getting together having fun, so let's put our money here. Mm -hmm. Right. It should be more than that. Absolutely. Okay. And you really, so you have to have people that know. Yes. And, and people that are really ready to work because the one that I went to, they had a secretary, they had a treasurer, wow. they had a captain. It was really formal. It was very formal. Okay and somebody that's willing to type the reports and send them out to the rest of the members mm -hmm. of that investment club. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, um, if you recommend an investment to the club, being able to defend it without feeling like you're being attacked. Mm -hmm. And not taking it personal when somebody disagrees with your investment club. Mm -hmm. And so they vote and do those Absolutely. on are we going to buy this, keep That's this, it. those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So it sounds more like, kind of like a small organization. Yes. Rather than a, a club. Mm -hmm. I, think, I mean, you know. A money-making organization. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. But we can do that on our own as well. Absolutely. And, 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 and that's, you know, and that's why we are having this conversation because that's something that we've just said in our community, in the black community. We don't have this kind of conversation mm -hmm. enough and we're not educating ourselves enough about investing and how you invest and what you invest in and uh, you know, just even why, right. why yeah. should I put my money over there when I can just put it in my bank account? Like why would I do that, <laughs> you know? You made me think back to the, the shoe box. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> because, and, and believe it or not, I did have somebody come to me with that strategy. And my response is, well, what if the house burned down? Mm -hmm. Then where is the retirement taken? And that's why you said, where are you going to keep the shoe box? Absolutely. A, a flame resistant box. Safe. <laughs> yeah, and safe. And here is a true story. What? I forget exactly what city it was, but somebody did, um, uh, the wife, she was mad at the husband because he went around telling everybody that they had all the money at their house. Somebody broke into that house. Say <laughs> was, I was going to say that, yeah, you don't tell people. <laughs> no, you don't. Wow. Uh, they stole the, the money? They got yes. the money? Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, so, hmm. but even going on the, along those lines, would it be safer to keep the money in the investment after retirement or transfer it to a regular bank account? I would you know, say, cash out and transfer. Well, because, so I also have those questions too. Because <laughs> I have people saying, well, 
I'm retiring, I still have a mortgage. So my mindset is I'm gonna take all my money out of my retirement savings, pay off the house so that way I do not have a mortgage in retirement. Well, when we think about an employer-sponsored plan, that's a tax-deferred account, mm -hmm. which means, let's say we accumulated $200,000, mm -hmm. and we also worked that year. So if we take our earnings, along with the money that we had in that 401k plan and take it out all in the same year, what have you done? You've, made You've increased money. your taxable mm -hmm. income for that year, mm -hmm. which increased the likelihood mm -hmm. that you're gonna owe more taxes when you buy your taxes. Mm -hmm. So I would say consider continuing to pay that mortgage like you've already been doing, because that's money that's still in the market and that money, by still being in the market, has the chance to do work. Continue to grow the time. So basically, you're saying that even once you retire, it's probably best to leave that money where it is. So the late great John Bogle said, "You should be completely invested in all parts of the stock and bond market at all times. Okay. In all parts. All parts." So when we think about the stock market, we're thinking about large cap, mid cap, mm -hmm. small cap, and international stock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. For a well diversified portfolio, absolutely. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. And international. Mm -hmm. And how do you find out about international? International. So the good thing is yeah. that if is there like one of those? You know, <laughs> well, you know how you get those um, uh, map for dummy books or mm -hmm. something. How do you find? How do you? Is there a stock market right. for dummies? <laughs> <laughs> they actually do have that. See? <laughs> <laughs> and I had another friend that's actually buying that book, stop buying stocks for dummies okay. or something like that. So they do have that. Because yeah. How do you do that? But the good thing is that if you have access to an employer sponsored plan, uh -huh. most companies they do what? They have a website, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So you can log on to that account online and click on the funds available within that plan. You know, I'm listening to you talk and I wish some of this, I, I wish these were things that were taught in school. Yes, yes. I mean, because you get grown, mm -hmm. and then, I mean, unless you, I mean, how did you learn this? Uh, it's something I just always had a passion for. I know that. So I didn't. <laughs> Neither I mean, did I. So. <laughs> I mean, as a kid, I remember laying in my bed, and I'm thinking, like, when I grow up, I want to travel for work. Okay. Not having any idea of what that actually meant. I just knew that I wanted you to wanted travel work for to work. Be, travel to be part of your... Yes. Okay. And I wanted a 401k plan. I had no idea what a 401k plan it was. It just sounded good. <laughs> and I think I landed in the best career of my life by accident. Mm. <laughs> because I traveled the country talking mm -hmm. about 401k plan. So I traveled for work. Talking about 401k, yeah. The two things just meshed into one. Had no idea this type of career even mm -hmm. existed. Mm -hmm. So, as you know, our show is Black Money Matters, um, and and we're talking again about how to increase wealth in the black community, and one and how to retain wealth in the black community. So, if if you were, if you had to give us some advice on how to make sure that these conversations were taking place, what would, would it be? Should we start talking to our kids? Should we talk to our schools? How do we get our kids to understand before they get that first job at 16, you know, at the local store or McDonald's on how to invest and grow their money? I would say start with your kids. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I ever remember my mom giving me, so I mean, she gave me so many things, but what I remember most is my sneaky bank that mm -hmm. I still have. Mm -hmm. And I just remember getting my coins and putting the coins in the bank. Mm -hmm. And I think if you celebrate the idea of 
saving money at a young age. Oh, I like that. That's Me something too. that will grow up with, with you. Because we seem to celebrate the idea of what did I just go buy? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We do. And then we and and I've been celebrating the I what what have I been able to buy from black companies mm -hmm. lately? That's yeah. what I've been celebrating. Yeah. That's um, kind of like right. <laughs> I mean, it, but but celebrating saving. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. She took me to what was, it used to be Citizens Bank. Mm -hmm. Sat there with me, opened my first savings account. Mm -hmm. And I just, over time, just watched it grow and grow and grow. And I remember when I first got my first $5,000, uh, she even took me to her broker mm -hmm. and said, well, he wanted to open up an account. Mm -hmm. And I thought he should talk to you. So he asked me a few questions. Well, what did you want? What do you want to do with that money? And I think I was maybe 18 wow. at the time. Okay. So there's one, there's this thing that I do, and, and me and my sons, we do, and we kind of compete. It's called the $5 challenge. Mm -hmm. So anytime we spend money and break whatever, if it's a five, it's a five you have to keep it. And you know, we'll tell each other, you know, I have this amount now, you know, just me and my two sons. And so, and, and we celebrate that within each other, amongst each other, you know, who saved the most money this week. I but think Alana's beating me in that one. In the $5 challenge? We're doing yeah. that one. <laughs> I <laughs> like the $5 I challenge. I'm nervous because now, you know, we don't use paper money as much. Mm -hmm. And even a lot right. of the stores aren't And not working as hard to get. Right. Yeah. Right. We $5 in a while, you know. Right. That. Right. Yeah, you know, because before you can have, you know, you mm -hmm. spend lunch money and right. have your five, and you always took your fives, yeah. and you save them, yeah. you know, and you put them away. So, five dollar challenges is one way. Are there any other? You talked about the Snoopy Bank. Are there any other things that we can do within family or with our children? Mm -hmm. um, make to celebrate. Doctor Weaver I mean. and I, we talk about grandkids. She has her first grandbaby. I have a, a lot of grandkids. <laughs> And we talk about grandkids a lot. And so as you're talking about the Snoopy Bank, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to go and buy all of my grandkids a little bank. And that's something that I can do with them. So what are some other things that we can do with, within, like, our own household mm -hmm. and within, to help our children begin to understand how to build wealth before it's time to go to the broker? Um, I say do exactly what you're doing, like the $5 challenge. And maybe you can't start there, but start, my thing is start what where if, you can. Because I also have one of those big jugs yeah. with, where I just put coins. Yeah. I just put my change. And in. I actually mm -hmm. did that too, and it would be like, if I break break a dollar, or mm -hmm. if I ever go out, spend money, mm -hmm. and I get change back, I would come home and put that change in the jar. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, well, it's Bad change, day. and a lot of times we throw it in the ashtray of our mm -hmm. car or mm -hmm. in the little console. But really start paying attention to it because I had a, it was a very small jar, maybe about this high. Mm -hmm. And I actually one day just counted it and it was like, it was about $200 mm -hmm. in that jar. Right. So what we don't realize is that small change matters mm -hmm. to the Lord, does add up. Mm -hmm. So small change can be a big thing. And, and we Absolutely. need to make, I mean, and we, there are small changes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we can start making. Absolutely. But I, I do, I like that idea of, of celebrate saving. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I do have to, okay, now this is <laughs> completely off topic. I have to ask Tamika this question. Because I'm, I'm loving this cup I'm drinking. Yes, right yes, <laughs> yes. So our cups, I'm going to look right at the camera. Our cups were created by Crafting with Peach. And I spoke with her and she does cups and she does um, different, like the water cups and, and she she put our little logo and Black Money Matters, and she can do those things for you, too. And if you want to reach out to her, she can be reached at 810-874-2850. Again, 810-874-2850. You said Crafting with Peach? Crafting with Peach. And again, one of the things that we talked about was it's celebrating. Young person, isn't She's young. She's young. Young, Black. One of the things we talked about was celebrating black businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and so, she, like I said, she's young, she's black, she was very efficient, very professional. So I suggest that if you need a cup, a water cup, she says she does little shot glasses, 
the contact crap you would teach. Another thing, what? Earlier, you mentioned that we had gotten a question via our email. Yes, we did. About it was stock talk, It was about talking about stocks. Absolutely. They said they were interested and they wanted us to talk more about that. Absolutely. And so I want to remind the audience that if you have a topic that you would like to see, um, or if you know someone, a business or, or someone that we should have mm -hmm. on our show, a professional to talk about how to grow black wealth, at, at however that looks, um, please have them email us at blackmoneymatters, the number two, at gmail.com. So that's blackmoneymatters2 at gmail.com. And as you see, we get a question and we reach out to someone to have them to come start, and right. talk and have that conversation. And, and you know, really, this conversation, you can't have this just one time. Right. And say, oh, I got it. Right. Unless you've been doing, you know, it's like, oh, okay, that one nailed it for me. I got it now. Right. But this is something that you really have to just keep talking about and mm -hmm. keep asking questions mm -hmm. to get a good understanding Absolutely. and not feel silly about it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Not feel silly about it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. We're excited to be talking about it now and to continue having this conversation mm -hmm. because we, these are things that we do need to know. And you thought about them as a kid, but a lot of us didn't. And if we didn't have someone to tell us and teach us, we did what they well, told us. we can plant us. that seed. We can plant that seed. But when you're told, go out, get a job, you know, and, and, and the, your, your 401k or your retirement plan will take care of itself, you know, and you, you have that option. My dad, he worked for the GM factory, and he has a retirement plan. The, the types of jobs that I do don't always offer those same types of retirement plans. So I have to and be... Retirement plans aren't what they used to be. They anymore, aren't. They, they, can't they be aren't. So it's not the same. You have yeah. to be a lot more intentional mm -hmm. about what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I always say, you said it earlier, think about what your retirement, how you want it to live. How you want to mm -hmm. live. Because you both said it, they don't teach us teach this in school, right. even you go to college, right. they're not telling you about a 401k plan. So you, you're pretty much going into the workforce. We're taught to get a job, but what do we do once we get that job? Mm -hmm. right. How do we take advantage of the benefits? Mm -hmm. So uh, there was this one gentleman, He this was Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He had a live education in a group session. He came up to me afterwards and said, well, I'm looking at retiring in about five months. And I'm thinking I'm gonna need about $5,000 per month mm -hmm. for a comfortable retirement. So I asked a few questions. Okay, well, how much do you currently have saved? His answer was about $10,000. Okay. Um, so I said, well, how much do you make now? He said, about 3,200 a month. Mm -hmm. So my question is, well, what do you plan on doing in retirement <laughs> that's gonna cost <laughs> you more, more than what it's costing you to live right now. Uh, so you do have to think about what does that retirement truly look like? Does it mean that you'll be staying in the same house or maybe downside, mm -hmm. maybe getting a vacation home? Mm -hmm. Do you want to travel? So if you have access to an employer sponsor plan, I would encourage you to go online because they should have tools that can help you find out what number makes sense for your situation? Because a lot of times, if you ask somebody how much they need for retirement, they'll just say a million dollars, just because the number sounds. Mm -hmm. But is that the right number right. for you? Mm -hmm. And every person will have a different number. So we need to find out what number is realistic to our situation. And 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 you account for things like inflation and that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Use those tools. Uh, certainly, we can average inflation mm -hmm. anywhere from three to four percent. Okay. And historically, what we think about is the downturns that impacted the market. Right. Even when we think about the coronavirus, mm -hmm. we think about the stock market crash. Mm -hmm. We think about all those events, but we what we do forget is that over the long run, the stock market has provided the highest rate of returns over savings account, over short-term reserves. Okay. So it, it, it's a, it can be a very safe investment. Is that what you're saying? Having the right Having mix the, right. of Having investment. Having the right mix. 
based on your risk tolerance and your time horizon can protect you and benefit you over the long run. So, so if someone does say, you know, I'm not five months, but if I'm five years out mm -hmm. from retirement mm -hmm. and I don't really have any savings, so, and I don't have, you know, I haven't been properly utilizing my 401k, what would be your suggestion to them to help prepare them as much as possible for that, to meet that five-year mark? I would say increase your savings rate. It, look at what you're saving. If you're currently at, let's say, hypothetically, you're at 5% now, mm -hmm. then increase what you're saving. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to do anything drastically. What I always tell people is uh, do it in small increments. If you're at 5%, then bump it up to 6%. Let's say you get that annual review and you get a 2% raise. Mm -hmm. Increase your savings right in that 401k plan by that 2%. It was money that you weren't getting anyway. Right. But now you're able to save it towards your retirement. Mm -hmm. And we may think, well, that's not going to make that big of a difference. But when you think over how many years mm -hmm. you have left to save, mm -hmm. if, you have, if you have 10 more years to work, mm -hmm. think about increasing that savings rate, and it can make a much greater difference. Mm -hmm. okay. And you've enjoyed your work, haven't you? I love it. <laughs> I love it. When I think about my career span, uh, I worked for a corporate credit union. Mm -hmm. We were the credit union to all the credit unions in Michigan. Oh. And then I ended up going to a large company. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I say call participant services, I used to be in participant services. Mm -hmm. So I talk to people every day. Why should I save? Or I don't understand this plan. Uh, I enjoyed having those conversations. Mm -hmm. Whether our call was supposed to be on average, three minutes, mm -hmm. but I had no problem spending 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it took for you to make the most of that benefit mm -hmm. that's available for you. Mm -hmm. Because I had those conversations where people were going into retirement, mm -hmm. some ready, some not ready, mm -hmm. whether it was voluntarily or involuntarily. But the main thing is having a plan. And by saving for your retirement, that's going to be your best plan because you do have that cushion. You do have that income replacement once you reach retirement. So you sound all excited. <laughs> I mean, you, know, right? you sound excited about it, and that's what we have to get to that point mm -hmm. where, oh, I'm excited that I've been able to do mm -hmm. this. And, and when you said how you celebrate those kinds of things, yeah. I just don't, that was refreshing. Yeah, yeah. That, and that, I think that's a good strategy because, mm -hmm. you know, we like to celebrate. And if I can celebrate saving, celebrate, you know, instead of my stock. Right. Instead of celebrating what just went out of your pocket. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Celebrate yes. what you've been able to keep in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you made a good point earlier. And this is what, when I actually started buying individual stocks, mm -hmm. that's, that's how I selected my stocks that mm -hmm. I bought. What you, where, where, where do you spend your, your money? money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where do you spend your money? Buy for myself. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I want to make some money while I'm sleeping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Those dividends, mm -hmm. they're my dividends. I'm, 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 I'm benefiting mm -hmm. where I'm spending my money right. by getting the dividend on owning the company. And that's another way of looking at it. I'm not actually buying stocks. I'm buying companies. Mm -hmm. That is a good way to look at it. Wow. So <laughs> I'm walking into my store. When <laughs> yes. I'm to my I, okay. I like that. I do, too. <laughs> yeah, I got I a piece of this. this <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, Absolutely. but that's a good way to look it at is. it, and, and, and that's what we have been talking about, and I think we've done that since when we started the first show. Yeah, we, we talked, talked about that, that, and then we talked about it maybe when we had uh, Bill Picard on. Yeah, we did. Yes, we the importance did. of buying from yourself mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and investing in yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, passing up, you know, you don't have to buy that this time, invest in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Invest in it. And you did, I mean, just, I don't know. <laughs> You're excited about yeah. it. And, and your excitement is making me excited. Exactly. I'm thinking, you know what, I need to do this, mm -hmm. and I can do that, you know. So it's ex it, it is exciting. Mm -hmm. It is exciting. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting, you know, to hear that we should, while we should start when, when we're young, mm -hmm. it's never too late. And that right. the changes that we would need to make wouldn't be life, total lifestyle changes. Like, I wouldn't have to give up my house to start saving for retirement. I could just make some tweaks 
Absolutely. and change how I do some things or change a little bit of money and it'll add up kind of like like you were saying like the change Absolutely. that we put in the bucket mm -hmm. or the five dollars that mm -hmm. we do in the challenge and how yeah. quickly we see that add up we're doing the same thing just in a different manner so to speak so yeah that is exciting yeah. and just think about your 401k plan like the jar strategy that you talk about once you first get started, mm -hmm. of course the jar is still going to be empty because right. you only have a few coins in it. Mm -hmm. But when you think, however long your working career is, if you have 10 more years, 20 more years, 30 more years, just think about how those coins will build up and accumulate over that amount of time. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to be able to see how much I have in mine. Yeah. Oh, I looked at mine today. <laughs> you did. <laughs> and he's, so I did he's, like, he's, <laughs> he's really smiling. He I'm like, smiling. okay, it must have been a good <laughs> one. <laughs> because I think back when I, I when I first started saving for retirement in my first job, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at oh my first thousand dollars, and I'm like, that's that's nothing. Mm -hmm. But then when I think like 20 years later, right. mm -hmm. now I'm looking at it uh -huh. because and I. Where you Got I let my money work for it, for uh -huh. me. Okay. You know, I feel, I go to work every day and I work pretty darn hard mm -hmm. for my money. So shouldn't my money work just as hard for me? That's right. And that's what it's doing. Absolutely. And how long did it take you to get to that point where you're looking like, oh, this little, these, this little bit of money wouldn't last me a week. So you, you know, you got, you looked at it and you're like, you know, I'm kind of doing, doing something. something. Right. Well, here's the thing. Here's here's where the education piece come in, especially being in the job that I'm in. Mm -hmm. uh, I started out in participant services on the phone, and my first job in that, I was making less than forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But I'm talking to participants in 401k plans, and when they call, you see their balance and wow, what did it take for you to get there? Mm -hmm. And talking to that person that's saving 100% mm -hmm. of their income. So one day I even asked the question, how did you do it? Mm -hmm. And she told me, she said, well, I retired from another job or I have a spouse that's working, so I'm able to save mm -hmm. in this plan. But the thing is, you may not be in that situation, mm -hmm. but find what situation you're in and make it work for you because I didn't have a spouse making so mm -hmm. much money that I could save 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have my second career, but I saved what I could, and that was 4%. And then I gradually increased how much I could right. save. Mm -hmm. uh, but studies show that most people don't pay attention to their 401k plan balances until it's at least equal to their annual salary. Mm -hmm. Because mm, that's when it looks good. Huh? It's like, <laughs> hey, I never thought I'd see this number. Yeah, okay. yeah. And you're this saying, is a year's worth of work. Yeah. <laughs> but you're saying we need to have a yearly appointment with our money. Absolutely. So when you go for your at annual minimum. physical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at, at minimum. Okay, or you can <laughs> pretend that you're going to the dentist and get that six-month six month check cleaning. Mm -hmm. check up that and do it twice a year. Mm -hmm. yes. But we need to schedule it and be very intentional, like you said, Kanika, mm -hmm. on those things. Yes. And when I go for my yearly or semi-annual money date, <laughs> <laughs> date with my money, what am I looking at? One, you're looking at your investment mix. Uh, do you have the right investment mix that will line up with your goals? Mm -hmm. uh, because one thing we forget is that the stock market is doing whatever that going up and going down. Mm -hmm. And whatever our intended allocation is, may have changed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because let's think about life events happening. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're no longer in that same job or you change the job mm -hmm. or, wow. or there's a life changing yeah. event mm -hmm. and you need to change your strategy, then make another appointment with your money. Okay, and uh, that's a good way to close. Make an appointment with your mm -hmm. money. Yes. So we hope you enjoyed 
this yeah. edition of the Black, Black Money, Money Matters. Matters. And we want to thank you, Antoine Little. Thank I mean, you. the information you gave us was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And My we hope pleasure. you'll come back again. I and when can people view it. us on Channel 17? They can view us on Channel 17, what, Saturday? Saturday and Wednesday. And Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So Wednesday at 3 o'clock. And mm -hmm. Saturday is it at 1 o'clock? At 1 o'clock. Early in the morning. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.